C2 gravity engine, copyrighted 2008 by D. Ertl. This is an amplification of a work that was done earlier under the title of Gravity Engine 1 and Gravity Engine 2, found at youtube.com. What I wish to do this time is to speak to the idea, the concept, of using the force of magnetism as attractive engines instead of the force of gravity and compare the two and find out why the force of magnetism is able to or not able to do the same thing as a gravitational field forming a gravity engine in outer space. We have two spheres. Both have a C2 value. C2 being equal to E divided by M is the third part of the physics trilogy. It describes why a gravity field forms in a mass. Initially we find the heated mass and we found another heated mass. If they were left together in outer space, each one would move toward the other. But in this illustration, we find that there is a mass only sphere. That's all there is, mass only. It is connected to a bar, to the one that is emitting a field of gravity. As a field of gravity attracts this sphere toward the one to the right, the bar causes the heated sphere to move away. As it moves away, it pulls the sphere that is not emitting a field of gravity. And this forms the basis of a C2 gravity engine. C2 being equal to E divided by M is the basis of this engine. And let's see why it works. Here we have C2 being equal to E divided by M. Notice if I get rid of the value of energy, the C2 would vanish. I did it in this equation. C2 equals E divided by M. I got rid of the energy. If there is no energy in relation to the mass, there is no C2. This disappears along with the energy. This being part of the physics trilogy is what God used in the creation of our universe. C2 is the basis of all existence. All mass and energy are composed of this particular value. C2 is a velocity. It is also a form of energy. Apparently the value of Planck's constant, the value of H. It is a multiplicity of these values united in waveform. I worked out the trilogy in this manner. C2 equals E divided by M, E equals MC2, and M equals E divided by C2. Notice in the energy, E equals MC2. If I get rid of the C2 value, then in this equation, energy ceases. All you would have would be mass. In this equation, if I get rid of the C2 value, mass would disappear. All you would have would be energy. In the E equals MC2 equation, C2 is a multiplier. In the mass, it is the divider. But in either of these, it is the basis for the equation itself. C2 remains the same. Mass goes up and down. That, that value changes. Energy goes up and down. That value changes. But the C2, or physical time, does not change. It is the basis of creation. It is what God used to make time with. Now, let's consider the force of magnetism. This is what we had just spoken of. We have a heated sphere having energy, which in turn forms or creates a field of gravity. 
we have a neutral lead sphere beside it and they're connected by a bar. As this emitted the force of gravity, it would pull on this and this would begin pushing away on the heated one, the mule and the carrot concept. There's another way to look at this that may be easier to understand it. Here we have two rods. They are connected laterally to the sphere on your right, which is a neutral lead sphere. It has no energy. It is not emitting a field of gravity. The one to your right is. This is emitting a field of gravity. This field of gravity passes through this lead sphere. And when it does, it is kind of like a vortex. It creates less resistance in form of time, in form of time, in form of time. It creates less resistance in form of time to this sphere. And time-wise, it begins pulling toward this one, or pushing in this instance. Now, notice as it begins moving in this direction, the spring behind this one causes the one to your left, the C2 sphere, to begin moving away. As it moves, it pulls this one. So there is the continual mule and carrot concept moving here. As this draws this one, the force of this mass, kinetic energy, C2 is being converted into the frequency of kinetic energy in this mass, and it begins moving in this direction. The reason it will not work in magnetic spheres is found in this illustration, your left and right ones. Here we have a magnetic sphere. This is neutral iron. The magnetic sphere is emitting a force, and as the force goes around and returns to it, it draws another mass, iron mass, toward it. And it seems as though this had ought to work the same as in outer space. It seems as though as this is being drawn toward this one, this would be moving away, and it would form the same concept is found in a C2 gravity engine, but it doesn't. And this is a reason. Now, this illustration, or this sphere, is the same one on your left, so they've been switched. Your left one is now to the right. This one is magnetized, and it is drawing the one to your left, toward it. Why doesn't this one begin moving away, being attached to the rods, the same as it would with a field of gravity. The reason is found is as a magnetic field forms and passes through another mass, it magnetizes this mass. This mass pulls with the same force as this mass. This mass is magnetizing this one. If these were two separate masses, this one having no magnetic field, this one having a magnetic field, I could use the mag magnet properties of this one and lift this one up. But then I can also use this one and pull this up. What this causes in this illustration is these two masses move toward a midway point and their forces cancel out. This does not happen in a gravity engine. This is a single dimensional force continually moving outward, passing through one mass after another after another. The force of gravity is an unusual form of force energy. It moves outward only. It moves in a single plane. It is unaffected by any other form of energy or mass. It goes through countless miles of mass with no hindrance to it at all.